Beautiful. Thank you, honey. Beautiful. All right, now Miss Mary Jane will have story time. Can you hear me? Is that better? John? Testing.
don't believe everything you read, and curiosity can get you something you don't really need. So when you're investigating a situation, investigators usually want to know how many eyeballs are on the subject. Eyeballs. I mean, how many witnesses do you have? And you should have more than one witness of something if you're really going to be good. In fact, the Bible tells us in Deuteronomy 19, a single witness shall not suffice against a person for any crime or for any wrong in connection to an offense that he has committed. Only on the evidence of two or more witnesses shall be a charge established. So I ask you, how many eyeballs do we have on Jesus' story? We have four Gospels, and they are Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Gospels, that's a word that means good news. Now why would we have to have four Gospels? We have them because four different people felt the need to write four different things for four different reasons. <clears throat> they had a different perspective. Perspective, do you know what perspective means? It means point of view, okay? Like if you were seated in the grandstands at a football game and you were seated on the front line on the bench, your perspective or your point of view of that football game may be different. Okay? Okay. So, first of all, we have Matthew. Now, Matthew is the first gospel in the New Testament, and it was written for people that are familiar with the Old Testament, the Jewish people. Matthew was Jew. Now, what he does is he takes great care in showing how Jesus fulfilled all the prophecies of the promised Messiah. And you can see this by how he starts out. He starts out the book of Matthew with the genealogy of Jesus. And he starts at Abraham and goes through King David all the way to Jesus. So, then there's the gospel of Mark. Now, Mark is a shorter gospel. He was the cousin of Barnabas. And he saw some of the things of Jesus. But mostly, he heard what Peter told him about Jesus. And Mark portrays Jesus as a suffering servant and son of God. He says, the one who came not to be served, but to serve, and give his life for a ransom for many. Now Luke, it's the longest gospel, and it's very thorough, because Luke talked to different people. He went and he talked to Mary, mother of Jesus, to find out what happened. He went to talk to different people that saw him. In fact, he says, I myself have carefully looked into everything from the beginning, so it seems good also to me to write down an orderly report of exactly what happened. Also, Luke was a Gentile. He was not a Jew. So when he presents Jesus, he presents Jesus as a savior for all nations. 
he frequently calls Jesus the Son of Man, which emphasizes his humanity. And then we come to John, the last of John, the books, a gospel. Now, John was one of the first four disciples that were selected. And so he really had his eyeballs on the scene. But you know, he says, which we have heard, which we have seen with our own eyes, which we have looked at, and our hands have touched. So he had eyeballs on the scene. Now his, his gospel is teaching of the miracles that emphasize the divine nature of Jesus. To John, Jesus was the cosmic son of God come to destroy the works of the devil. And the whole book is arranged to present Jesus this way. Kind of has a different feel from the other three Gospels. In fact, if you look at the way the four Gospels start, it'll give you an idea of the difference in them. Mark begins with Jesus being baptized. Luke begins with the happening of his birth. And Matthew, he begins with Abraham and traces the gene genealogy all the way down to Jesus. But John, John is different. John takes us back to the very first words of the Bible. He says, in the beginning, John's telling a story of a divine being who became flesh and dwelt among us and died so we may have everlasting life. So John emphasizes the divine nature of Christ. 2 Peter 1.16 says, we didn't make up these stories when we told you about it. With our own eyes, we saw him in all his majesty. So there's a lot of good evidence in the Bible about Jesus. And it stood, it stood the test for 2,000 years. I believe it. Do you? Okay. okay. Let's have prayer real quick. Our precious Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for all you do for us, Lord. And we thank you for your plan that saved us from mm -hmm. sin. Lord, we ask that you bless these children that they may have ears that will hear mouths that will speak of your love, actions that will show others that they are Christians. Lord, we thank you and we praise you in Jesus' precious name. Amen.